Welcome back to the Aussie Target YouTube channel. In today's video we're going to talk through making your own maps and the tools that I use to, to get them ready for Aussie Explorer. So the first thing is, this is the program I tend to use, Terra Incognita. Sourceforge.net, just search for it and get it downloaded and installed on your PC. Uh, the only thing I'd say is you're going to need either a lot of RAM or a reasonably powerful computer to, uh, to process these images because it's going to download a whole bunch of tiles to make up the map, stitch them all together and generate quite large images. So once you've got that installed, get it opened up and it will look something like this. Now, first thing we need to do for Aussie Explorer is go through and change some of the settings. So if we go Files, Settings, um, first change I make is get it off meters or yards or whatever it installed on and put it onto kilometers. And then come along here to the second set of Aussie Explorer settings. You've got Aussie Explorer Map Save. And in here we can set the maximum image size that it will produce. So you can increase that to 32,000 pixels for width and height. Just keep in mind a map that size will be over two gigabytes when it's saved to your computer. By default it will be creating the map as a JPEG, but you want to increase the value to 100%. Or if your computer can handle it, actually work in TIFF. It'll make a TIFF image for the map and that'll actually be much higher quality than the JPEG. So they're the first settings that I change. Now, the second thing is you've got your map sources. So basically you can get imaging from everywhere and anywhere, and you're just gonna to have to hunt through, find the map that is best for the area that you wanna create. So something just to be aware of, Google Maps can be problematic. Uh, quite often their satellite or their hybrid maps uh, won't work. Uh, if you download too many tiles, their server will block you from downloading anymore, and then you'll get to see this dragon quite often. Uh, so just try a couple of different things. Bing seems to let you download everything as much as you want uh, and the hybrid map here or rather the terrain map from Google seems to work pretty well as well but just be aware you don't get kicked off their servers for downloading too much. Now we want to get in and create a map. So I'm going to do a map in New South Wales using top, topo maps and this is all of New South Wales. I'm going to do something up here in the Byron Bay area because I know that I've already got it cached and uh, and working. So you can see this is a little bit crunchy and with this particular map source you need to be at maximum zoom to get the best quality out of it. But you can see that's going to make quite a nice topo map. So we need to select the area that we want to make a map. So basically if you center your map, you've got a couple of different ways of doing this. Rectangle selection, you can draw a box and you can edit that box by dragging the edges, dragging the corners and move the actual box around. The only trick with this selection mode is that as long as this is ticked here, if you click outside inside the box you move the box click on the edges and the corners you'll move that click outside the box and it will make a new selection area which can be really frustrating when you click in the wrong area so just keep in mind if you want to pan your map you need to go in select turn off the selection now you can pan your map around to to look at what you're doing so that's, uh, that's the end trick. So that's one way of doing it. The other option is to go to enter values. You'll come up with this little window here. Center the map on, uh, you're gonna make a selection that's centered on there. You can either manually pump in uh, or edit in all your latitude and longitude details or just center the image on the area you're interested in. And for example, if we wanna do a five by 5K box, we can just type that in and get that. So let's do that one. To generate the map now, what you need to do is set the zoom level that you want to create the map at. So if you go to save a map here, it will create the map at zoom level 14. If you're zoomed out here, it will create the map at that zoom level. So just so that that's really clear, if I go to 12 and I go file, save map, Aussie Explorer map, I call it 
test one, then it's already created that map. If I now go to Aussie Explorer and I say load map file, you'll see that we've got this tiny crunchy little map that is really useless. So what we need to do, if we want to make a decent map here, we need to zoom all the way in to maximum zoom level. So zoom level 16. Now we go file, save map, Aussie Explorer map, call it test 2. Saving the map, that's done. Go back to Aussie Explorer, say load map file, test 2. And what you can see now is that we've got a decent map. So that's nice and high quality. Now that's the TIFF file there. And obviously if you're making a much bigger map, it's going to take longer to download the tiles and stitch them together. And you're going to end up with a gigantic TIFF file. So we can see here that... Um, that this map file at the moment, the test two that we just did then, uh, the TIFF file is 21 meg. So, you know, that's a 5K by 5K map, a 21 meg. So what we want to do is go in, hopefully you've already got image to OZF installed in Aussie Explorer. If not, there's another video in this, uh, in this channel that explains how to use this. But uh, if we do a refresh on that, go to test two map, configuration, neural net 95% uh, quality, no other settings needed, convert map. That will run through, reduce the colors. And there you go, that's done. So if I now go back into Aussie Explorer, say load map file, I've now got test2.ozf. I can load that. And the advantage here is that all the zoom levels are pre-rendered. So it looks good at all the zoom levels. And it is much faster to load, particularly with larger maps. The other advantage here is that we have a big reduction in file size. So you can see that the original test2 TIFF file, 21 meg, the test2 OZF file is now down to three and a half meg. So a huge saving in file size, sizes. And when you get to much larger maps, um, much faster load times and uh, better performance of Aussie Explorer. So let's jump back into Terry Incognito and talk about some advanced tools. Uh, first thing we're going to talk about is saving your selection. So you can add a label to your selection here. I've already done this one, so Byron Bay test, okay. And what that means is that if you open this up, you haven't got a selection, you want to go back to a previous map, then you'll have this ridiculously long history where you can select your test uh, or your map uh, selection and it will reload it for you. The second thing here is you can then create maps of the same map area from different map sources. So if I jumped into Bing and I wanted some satellite imagery for this area as well, you can grab that, you can zoom into whichever level of uh, whatever zoom level you want. You can set your zoom level and then you can make that map from, from the aerial imagery as well. So you can jump between those in Aussie Explorer. Uh, a quick tip with downloading tiles. Uh, if you go into, I'll stop that. If you go into save map and do a dummy without saving, that will automatically download all the map tiles for you. So if I click on that down the bottom here, you'll see it's downloading the map tiles. That downloads them into the cache in the background. And it just means that when you go to render your map, it's definitely got all the imagery there. Sometimes I've found if I'm making a really big map and the internet can't keep up, it will end up with a couple of black squares or black areas in the map where it hasn't been able to download the tiles in time while it's trying to render the map image. So to make sure that doesn't happen, uh, save map to dummy. Uh, we'll download those first and then you can come back 
once it's finished and make your Aussie Explorer map. I'm going to stop that from downloading. Then the other thing as well here is this information down here will tell you the size of the map that you're making, give you some idea of how much load everything's going to be under. So we've got the size in kilometres, just under 5 by 5 kilometres, and at each zoom level it will tell you how many pixels that image is going to be. So when I zoom right in, our map now is going to be 9,500 pixels by 9,500 pixels. If I change my map source and I go back to the topo map at maximum zoom level, you can see that that 5 by 5k area is 2,382 pixels. It'll give you some idea of the map that you're making. Okay, let's have a look at making a larger map. So if we go to our selection here, we're going to enter values. Let's make a 50 by 50 map. So when we zoom out, we can see that that's not where we want it. So to move that selection, we'll turn on our rectangle selection. Now we can drag that box to the area that we're interested in. Turn that off. And what we can see here is if we zoom in now to maximum quality, we've got this 50 by 50 box and it's about 23,000 pixels. Now my recommendation, as I said before, save map, dummy without saving so that it downloads all the map tiles that it needs to download and then once that's completed you can then come along to the side here and do your Aussie Explorer map. Now a large map like this you will definitely want to convert to OZF. If you're having problems you just need to, to make smaller maps depending on the power of your computer. Uh, the final trick we're going to talk about is putting grids over satellite images. So if I went to a satellite image like this, down in the bottom corner here, you've got the option for grid. So I'll just move this so that we can actually see what's going on. But you can select UTM one kilometer grid. And you'll see now that we've got a grid overlaid on our map. So when we make that map, that grid will be burnt into the map image. So that can be really helpful as well. You want to get rid of that, just turn it off, uh, no grid. And that's about it for me. Enjoy making maps and uh, thanks for watching.